welcome back. Uh, in today's lecture, I will start with the module 1 that is introduction to turbo missions and the thermodynamics uh, which is applicable for the turbo missions. So, I will start with the introduction part. So, in today's class, we will study about uh, the definition of turbo mission, the different parts of turbo mission, then we will study about uh, the difference between a positive displacement mission and a turbo mission and at the end we will study about uh, the classification of turbo missions. First, let us see uh, the definition. Uh, before going to the definition, in the previous uh, introductory lecture, I talked about uh, the positive displacement mission and turbo mission and these two comes under uh, the category of fluid missions. If you, rem if you recall, Fluid missions are the devices where the energy exchange takes place between the fluid and uh, a mission. So, the energy will be in the form of fluid power and the mechanical power. The mechanical energy can be converted into fluid energy and those devices generally call them as power absorbing devices as they are consuming mechanical energy. For a mechanical engineer, uh, the mechanical power or the mechanical energy is the currency. So, if we are losing, then we call it as power absorbing and if we are gaining mechanical energy, if we are gaining currency, then we call them as power producing turbo missions. So, uh, sorry, power producing fluid missions. Uh, under that, we have turbo mission and positive displacement mission. So, in the case of turbo mission, uh, as we had discussed, positive displacement missions uh, the fluid will be confined within a cylinder and then the energy exchange takes place between the machine and the fluid due to change in the volume. So, the fluid will be contained and uh, it will be separated from the rest of the fluid. But in the case of turbo machine, the fluid will be flowing continuously, there is no cont containment of the fluid and the energy interaction happens between the fluid and a rotating element. So, now let us see the definition of turbo machine. Turbo machine is a device where in which the energy transfer occurs between a flowing fluid and a rotating element, the rotating element due to dynamic action and this results in a change in the pressure and momentum of the fluid. So, the definition, uh, this is stated by different authors in a different way, but the uh, most accepted definition is that it's a tub, it's a device in which the energy exchange takes place between a flowing fluid and a rotating element uh, that is uh, the energy exchange will be due to the dynamic action and the energy exchange will result in the change in the pressure and momentum of the fluid. So, the pressure of the fluid may increase or the pressure of fluid may reduce, the momentum may increase or the momentum may reduce. It depends on whether the machine is a power producing or a power absorbing turbo machine. In the case of power absorbing, the pressure and momentum of the fluid will increase and in the case of power producing, they will reduce. So, there is the definition of turbo mission. Now, let us see the parts of a turbo mission. So, here I have written the diagram or schematic representation of a steam turbine. It is an axial flow turbo mission. We will see the classification at the end of this class. It is an axial flow impulse turbo mission. Okay, here uh, this components or the parts which I represented using this are most commonly present in all the turbo missions. Few may be absent and few may be present in some other turbo missions. So, first uh, the most important part of the turbo mission is the rotor. So, this is the rotor drum. The moving blades, so these are the moving blades. These moving blades will be mounted on the rotor blade and the rotor, uh, the rotor drum is connected uh, or will provide the mechanical energy or will absorb the mechanical energy with the help of the shaft. The shaft will be, uh, it can be an output shaft or it can be an input shaft. It is a power producing turbo machine, then the output from the machine will be uh, the mechanical energy. So, this becomes the output shaft. If it is a power absorbing turbo machine, then we have to supply mechanical energy to that. So, then this shaft becomes the input shaft. The rotor drum is mounted on the shaft and then the moving blades are mounted on the rotor drum. So, then uh, in some cases we may have stationary blades. So, these blades are stationary blades which are mounted on the casing. 
So this is the casing. Again, casing and stationary blades may be present or may not be present in some of the turbo machines. The best example is the ceiling fan or the windmill. Both are uh, turbo machines. Windmill is also a turbo machine and the ceiling fan is also a turbo machine. Both do not have a casing and a fixed blade. But they have a rotating blade, they have the rotor or hub and they have a shaft. Okay, windmill is a power producing turbo machine and fan is a power absorbing turbo machine. But both will have the shaft, rotor and the moving blade. Uh, the stationary blade and the casing may not be present. If the casing is present and if the stationary blade is present, then the main uh, use or the main aim of the casing and stationary blade is to guide the fluid flowing through the turbo machine in a particular direction depending on whether it is a radial or axial flow turbo machine. Then we have the inlet and outlet. Again the inlet if the casing is not present then we will not have the inlet and outlet. If the casing is present then we will have an inlet and outlet. In this direction the uh, steam it is a steam turbine the steam enters here and enters the smaller portion of the turbine as it passes as the steam expands through the turbine the volume increases, the specific volume of the steam keeps on increases as the pressure reduces. So to accommodate the same flow rate, we need to increase the flow area. That is why the height of the blade is increasing. And remember, turbo machines are steady flow devices. The uh, uh, flow rate of, or the mass flow rate of the fluid will be steady or will be same whether I take the cross section here or if I take the cross section here. The uh, mass flow rate will be same. So to accommodate the expanding stream, we need to increase the flow area to keep the mass flow rate constant. Uh, these are the parts of the turbo machine. The major parts are the shaft, rotor or the hub and the moving blade. So these three will be present in all the turbo machines. In some of the cases, we may have stationary blade and casing. The best example for this is our centrifugal pumps which we use in our day to day life. So in those cases we have the stationary blade as well as the casing. So these two will provide uh, the proper direction for the water to flow, water to be drawn from the sump and delivered to the overhead tank. So these are the parts of the turbo machine. Now uh, let us see the comparison between a positive displacement machine and a turbo machine. The class, uh, the comparison has been done under various headings. So the first heading which I am going to consider Now let us see the comparison of a positive displacement machine and a turbo machine. So the comparison has been done under various headings. So first let us see uh, the action. Under the action as we know the positive displacement machine the, in the positive displacement machine, the energy transfer or the energy exchange takes place when the fluid is nearly static and the movement of the surface will be slower. Uh, the movement of the uh, surface of the machine will be slow. So here that results in the change in the volume or displacement of the fluid. So uh, this creates a thermodynamic and mechanical effect between a near static fluid and a relatively slow moving surface and this involves change in the volume or the displacement of the fluid. But in the case of turbo machine, uh, we know that in the case of turbo machine the fluid will be flowing and the rotor or the element of the machine will be rotating. So here since the fluid is flowing we have dynamic action and this creates a thermodynamic and dynamic action between a flowing fluid and a rotating element and this involves changes in the pressure and momentum of the fluid. So that is the uh, difference in the action between a positive displacement machine and a turbo machine. Now we will come to the second heading that is operation. So in the operation of a positive displacement machine, it involves reciprocating motion and uh, there are a few devices in which you can have purely rotary motion. but majority of the cases it is reciprocating motion and this involves uh, the operation of valve. Since we need to provide a positive containment, we need to have walls to close the flow path and that creates additional complexity. But in the case of uh, 
turbo machine, it involves purely rotary motion. We don't have any reciprocating or any other type of motion in a turbo machine. So all the turbo machines are purely rotary rotor in motion. And since we have rotary, rotary motion and continuous flow of fluid, the flow is steady here. But in this case, the flow will be unsteady. And here in the under positive displacement machine, there will be a positive containment of the fluid. The fluid will be entirely sealed off with the rest of the fluid. But here, in this case, the turbo machines, there is no such uh, containment of the fluid. That, uh, under the heading of mechanical features, so the speed of the, the positive displacement machines are lesser. Uh, so they are low speed machines. But when it comes to turbo machines, they are high speed machines. The speed of the turbo machine can go as high as 60,000 RPM. But generally, the speed of a positive displacement machine is uh, in the range of 3,000 to 6,000 RPM. So they are slow speed machines and they are very high speed machines. Then, the, uh, since this involves a reciprocating motion and imbalance uh, in the masses, so to balance that, the design of this will be relatively complex. The design of the positive displacement machine will be relatively complex. But since we have pure rotary motion in the case of turbo machine, the uh, design is relatively simple when compared to a positive displacement machine. Then the third uh, point under mechanical feature is, um, it is heavy, it's usually heavier per unit power output. That is, in the introduction, I spoke about the power to weight ratio. In the case of po positive displacement machine, the power to weight ratio will be less. But in the case of the turbo machine, the power to weight ratio will be high because the weight will be light when compared to uh, per unit power output from the turbo machine. Then uh, the positive displacement machine involves the valve operation to provide a containment it, uh, the wall has to open and close to allow the fluid to flow into the chamber and out of the chamber. But see, since here the flow is steady and continuous, there is no uh, involvement of valves. Uh, the valves which we use in the case of turbo machines are just to uh, control the amount of flow and not to contain the fluid. So there is no involvement of valve movement in this case. Then uh, the heavier, uh, we need heavier foundation because of the unbalanced masses. So the vibrations will be more in the case of positive displacement machines. And to counter that, we need to have a heavier foundation for the positive displacement machine. But in the case of turbo machine, since the uh, motion is a pure rotary, uh, we can easily balance the masses, rotate, balance the rotating masses. And because of that, a lighter foundation is required or a lighter foundation is sufficient in the case of a, a turbo machine. Uh, the next we will, uh, we will consider the efficiency of energy conversion process. So since here we are dealing with a near static fluid and a positive containment, uh, the energy transfer is, the energy conversion efficiency is higher in the case of a positive displacement machine. So, when we are dealing with fluid uh, energy transfer, either the fluid has to get compressed or pressurized or it has to get uh, expanded or reduction in the pressure should, pressure should occur. So in the case of turbo machine, since we have dynamic process here, the action is dynamic, the compression by dynamic process or dynamic action will result in a lower, uh, lower efficiency of energy conversion process. But when it comes to expansion, it is slightly higher than the compression process, but slightly lesser than the uh, positive displacement machines. And the last category is the volumetric efficiency. So since here, we have a lot of restrictions for the fluid movement. We have inlet wall, we have outlet wall, and the flow is intermittent and unsteady. Here the volumetric efficiency is relatively lesser than the turbo machines. When it comes to turbo machines, since the flow area will be large and there, are, there is no involvement of valves uh, which obstruct the flow, here the volumetric efficiency is nearly 100%. And
When it comes to a positive displacement mission, since the it's a slow speed mission and involves valve operation and a lot of restrictions are present and the flow is unsteady, because of these reasons, the uh, fluid handling capacity of a positive displacement mission is very low. And when it comes to a turbo mission, since uh, there are very high speed missions and there are no valves, uh, the operation of valves, there is, there is less restriction and the fluid flow is steady and because of these reasons, the fluid handling capacity of a turbo mission is higher. So these are the basic difference between a positive displacement mission and a turbo mission. Although uh, there are advantage, slight advantages in the case of positive displacement missions and slight advantages in the case of turbo missions, none of these missions are superior to others. They have their uh, own place in the energy conversion field. Uh, for example, IC engines cannot be replaced by a turbine in our bikes or cars. Uh, similarly, for power production, uh, we cannot rely on diesel engines. Uh, we have to go for a gas turbine or a steam turbine. So, they are not superior to one another. They complement the drawbacks uh, at a positive displacement mission complements the drawbacks of a turbo mission and the turbo mission complements the drawbacks of a positive displacement mission and they have their roles to play in the production of energy or in the mechanical engineering field. Now let us see the classification of turbo missions or the classification of fluid missions. So the fluid missions are classified as rotodynamic or turbo missions, then positive displacement mission and miscellaneous missions. Okay. When it comes to turbo mission, again this is further classified into three types. Uh, here I have written only two types, but in the introduction I have discussed three types. The first one here is fluid energy to mechanical energy and we call them as power producing turbo missions. The fluid energy will be converted into mechanical energy in these kind of missions. And the general name given for those kind of missions is turbine. And depending on the working fluid, we call it as steam turbine, gas turbine or water turbine or hydraulic turbines. These turbines can be further classified based on the direction of fluid flow relative to the shaft of the turbo machines or the rotor of the turbo machine. If the flow is tangential to the turbo machine shaft, then we call it as tan tangential flow turbo machine and the best example is Pelton wheel. If the flow is axial or parallel to the shaft, then we call them as axial flow turbo machine and the example is Kaplan turbine. If the flow is radial, if this is the shaft and if the flow is radially outward or radially inward, then we call them as radial flow turbo machine and the best example is Francis turbine. And the last one is mixed flow turbines where the fluid may enter in the axial direction and leave in the radial direction or the fluid may enter in the radial direction and leave in the axial direction. So those kind of turbines we call them as mixed flow turbines. The best example is the modern day Francis turbine. So these are the further classification of turbines. Then we have uh, devices where mechanical energy gets converted into fluid energy. So these are the power absorbing turbo machines where the input energy is mechanical energy and the output energy is the fluid energy. So those are our pumps. Again in our pumps we have radial flow pump and mixed flow pump. Then we have the fans, the ceiling fan or the table fan. These are the example or the fans used in the computer to circulate cooling air. So these are the examples of the fans. Then we have the compressors. If you have seen the cross section of a jet engine, so the initial part of the jet engine will be the compressor that uh, then we have the combustion chamber and we have the turbine and at the end we have the exhaust. So the compressors, uh, those are the power absorbing turbo machines and then we have the blowers. The blowers are used in uh, dryers or the blowers are used in vacuum cleaners to draw air or to suck air from the uh, inlet. So those are the examples. Uh, the classification of uh, power absorbing or mechanical energy to fluid energy turbo machines. And when it comes to positive mission, again here we have uh, the energy exchange can take place from fluid to the machine or the conversion from fluid power to mechanical power or from mechanical power to fluid power. The pumps are the devices where 
the fluid power gets converted into sorry the mechanical power gets converted into fluid power. So, under pumps we, ha we can have pure rotary motion as well as we have reciprocating pumps. The examples for pure rotary motion pumps are gear pump, screw pump, vane and low pumps. So, these are the examples for rotary pumps which are positive displacement in their action and we have uh, reciprocating pumps. In this case the diaphragm pumps and the reciprocating pumps are examples. So, these reciprocating pumps you might have seen in, you have, you might have seen in, uh, in the case of a service station where you give your vehicle for wash, there the pressurized water comes from these reciprocating pumps. Then uh, if the uh, fluid energy gets converted into mechanical energy, then we call them as motors. And again uh, as we have uh, in uh, rotary pumps, we have gear pump, screw pump and vane pump. Here also we have gear pump, sorry gear motor, piston motor and the vane motor. So, uh, the best example for piston motor is you can uh, remodify IC engine to work as a motor where compressed air will be uh, sent to the engine cylinder and that pushes the piston downwards creating a rotary motion with the help of a crankshaft. And we have the jacks, the hydraulic jacks or the pneumatic jacks which are used, they are, uh, that also comes under positive displacement machines. Then we have miscellaneous machines where the fluid flow is either uh, positively contained or the motion of the uh, the motion of the machine component is rotary. If it is rotary, it comes under uh, rotodynamic or turbo machines. If it is, if there is a positive containment, then it comes under this. But there are few machines which will not fall under these two categories, and they are categorized under miscellaneous machines. And those are hydraulic brakes, air brakes, then the jet pumps, then the airlift pump, thermosiphon pump and the hydraulic ram. These are the examples for miscellaneous fluid machines where the fluid energy will be converted into mechanical energy or the mechanical energy will be converted back to fluid energy. So, these, is the, these are the classification of turbo machines.